Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul, where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination, providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts, which they earn by watching. We begin with the starship that we had some trouble with in the previous episode. We have it in orbit around Phobos, and here is the supply container that has some of its own propulsion and control so that it can get to the station without the starship actually like docking to the station in order to help. And so it does that. The live streams represented in this video are still from before I got my new computer. And in fact, some of the events of the live stream here are part of the reason why I got my new computer. So the lagginess, well, it, uh, it finally broke me. So anyway, but we'll see in a little bit. Here the container is docking to the station, the Phobos station. And so we are resupplied, that is a fairly large container, and we separated off a spent container that had a Raptor vacuum engine on the tail of it. The Starship dock to this is not the Starship that brought that supply container. That Starship is just going to hang out for now. Anyway, we also have a mission bringing in uranium nitride for all of our reactors. We have a lot of reactors. We've got reactors with ion engines on, we've got reactors with the Attila thrusters on. And apparently what they need is uranium nitride, so we are bringing them uranium nitride, which is pretty darn heavy, by the way. It is capturing into orbit around Mars manually, no air braking. And after it does that, this is an inclination change, so that it is in the same plane as Phobos. And then we also lift up its orbit from the low periapsis used to capture into Mars orbit to the periapsis of Phobos. And so it'll be all set to rendezvous with Phobos when we have the time to bring it in. But right now we have other things to do. We have the Jupiter Wet Workshop, this SLS tank that was converted into a habitat. Well, the oxygen part is converted into a habitat. And this is swinging by Europa many, many times in an attempt to get into orbit around Europa. And for now, we're still trying to have it do all the work to get into orbit around Europa, but it's really tight. The reason why we're doing so many flybys of Europa, and it actually takes most of this particular stream as we keep trying to do corrections and flybys of Europa over and over and over again. We keep trying to get Europa's help to get into orbit around it, but ultimately I decide that it's just not feasible with the ion engine propellant that we have. We just don't have enough Delta V, so we are going to need to get help from the other missions around Jupiter, namely the Jupiter Station and the Jupiter Supply Vessel. Both of these are also ion engine ships, but they don't have quite as much dry mass as the SLS Wet Workshop that we have there. And also they have most of their fuel, as you can see this one has most of its Xeon gas available right now. Now I can't really tug the SLS Wet Workshop, it doesn't have a docking port in the right location for that, and also that's a lot of dry mass to tug around. Uh, so Envy Silence, the tourist who wanted to get into orbit around Europa, not land by the way, just get into orbit, will have to transfer into the Jupiter station to make use of it. Now I have a plot there, you can see 3550 meters per second to get into orbit around Europa, but we only have uh, less than that, we have less than that, so we don't have enough. And so I decide that the best thing to do is to use what fuel this thing has to correct its inclination with Europa. Even though we've been passing by Europa all these times, we haven't actually gotten it flat to Europa. We tried to correct its inclination before, but uh, in order to get some of the flybys, we've had to accept worse situations along the way. Anyway, so the SLS Wet Workshop did part of that. It couldn't do all of the inclination correction because it just takes too long with the ion engines. That's another reason why we can't get it quite precise because uh, we deviate from the best location to do an inclination change after a while. Uh, so yeah, we continue to manage things, but this takes up most of this particular live stream, just trying to manage these missions, the SS Wet Workshop, the Jupiter Station, and the Jupiter Supply Vessel that can also help. You can see it has 22,000 meters per second, not to mention the supplies that are available, and those will be important to make sure that Envy Science stays alive. You can see the rest of the solar system in the background there and then the Jupiter system in front of us. I thought that was a nice view in the map view uh, to get those. But anyway, in the midst of dealing with those missions for many hours, it turns out that we had arrived at another Jupiter window. And Synonym Toast Crunch, that's Synonym, not Cinnamon. A synonym Toast Crunch uh, decided that he wanted to land on Ganymede. Ultimately, that will be changed to landing on Europa because Synonym Toast Crunch earned more struts by watching and decided to upgrade the journey. 
Uh, I guess it's an upgrade. I mean, yeah. I mean, Europa costs more to get to because it's further in, uh, closer to Jupiter, and it takes more Delta V. Anyway, but yes, so we had another Jupiter trip on our hands, and I decided to make what ultimately, in hindsight, is a very inadvisable rocket with RD-170s on the bottom instead of the F1 engines, and also the Raptor vacuum engines on the second stage in place of the J2 engines, so this is a truly messed up sort of Saturn V rocket. And just to make things better, I put shuttle SRBs on, because that surely will make this less controversial. So here we are, that is the rocket, and that is going to launch Synonym Toast Crunch over to Jupiter, and also Pekka. Pekka wanted along for the ride, but did not have enough to land just to get into orbit. So I extended the core tank because with all the boosters and everything and the more efficient engines, we could easily carry more fuel. And so, yep, we did so. So it's an extended S1C tank. And here it goes with eight shuttle SRBs. These are just four second ones, I believe. Lag, lag, lots of lag. There's a nuclear stage on top of the putative S2 stage, which is actually currently filled with methane and oxygen for the Raptor engines. A lot of the lag, by the way, is not just because of the vehicle or anything like that. First of all, you can see the resource list that this thing has to keep track of. That, that is probably one thing. There's a lot to keep track of once you have a lot of mods, uh, and in case of the interstellar and everything. But another factor is just the sheer number of missions we have in this save. Uh, there are people everywhere, right? There are people on the way to Uranus, around Saturn, Jupiter, uh, tons of people around Mars. So, yeah, we've got a lot to deal with here as the core stage here runs out. And there we go. And separation time. There's an ignition. And there are the five Raptor vacuum engines. The Raptors bring us close to orbit, but not quite orbit, and we finish up orbit with the nuclear engines. So that's that. And then we plot our transfer to Jupiter. And that transfer costs just a little bit more than what the nuclear engines can give us here. As we see the vessel skirting about the daylight side, but unfortunately our transfer occurs on the nighttime side, so we'll have to finish this burn with the ion engines. And there the nuclear engines are getting spent, having done as much as they could. Uh, 22,000 meters per second on the ion engine system, that's why we use the ion engines. Um, yeah, that's why we use the ion engines. In this case I decided to go with argon gas, I tested some of the propellants propellant options and decide that argon gas might be interesting, but the MechJeb reading in the VAB for the stage time of this argon gas ion stage had been wrong. It said that the stage time was much less than what we see here, which is uh, more than 30 days, and I was not counting on more than 30 days of burn time, so that was a huge minus there. Uh, each of the potential ion engine propellants have their own benefits and drawbacks, and argon is very efficient, but really, really low thrust. So I found out that it was even lower thrust than I was expecting. Now, since we were sending extra people over to Jupiter, I decided to do a supply launch also to Jupiter. And this is with a first stage that has RD-270Ms with pentaborane and just the four uh, extra boosters. Those are UA1563s or something like that, not the shuttle SRBs. But you'll notice no sound, and that is because uh, during this uh, particular live stream, my computer crashed, and that corrupted the recording. And so the only version of the recording I have is from Twitch, which has my voice baked in, and that would be confusing, so I have to mute the audio from it. So... Uh, there's only one audio track, unlike the version that I myself record. Uh, here we have four hydrogen engines of some kind. They might be uh, Raptor vacuums converted to hydrogen, I think, on that stage. And there the fairings go. And again, there's just a supply vessel. And it's got uh, three sets of ion engines, a total of 30 ion engines actually there, plus the normal reactor. 
and we have some small hydrogen engines there. I think they're 250 kilonewtons apiece. I forget what kind. They're probably sure strut engine types. They only do part of our burn for Jupiter, uh, basically just getting us out of Earth SOI, and then we're relying on the ion engines for the rest. So that's the end of that stage. And here we have 30,000 meters per second with the ion engines, but uh, one of the ion engine sets uh, is not properly set to krypton gas, which I decided to use this time. It was still set on xenon gas because I didn't place them in sentry, I placed them individually, but the propellant setting didn't catch. So we are a little bit under thrust and we again have a long burn time, <laughs> but we're using krypton gas this time. So now, now some of our ion systems are using xenon, some using argon, some using krypton. It's all very complicated. Anyway, so I plot a correction for Jupiter so that we can hit Jupiter because of course things were not quite right. But while that was sort of on its way out to where we need to do the ion engine correction, we needed to pay attention to the Jupiter station which is doing various corrections to meet up with the SLS work workshop still. So yes, we had those alarms and we conduct those corrections. There's another one. We've got a lot of these vessels with ion engines and the ion engine blocks in the back and uh, otherwise sort of cylindrical with lots of radiators poking out. So they're a little bit complicated to keep track of. This is still the supply vessel that we just launched. So this is the correction burn with it, 3,363. Uh, thankfully, we have plenty of Delta V. That's one thing we do have. And it turns out that this bur plotted burn actually does get us an encounter. So we can just do a minor correction midway to make sure it gets there for the sake of synonym toast crunch and pika and this is another burn with the vessel currently in orbit around jupiter to help out and be silence with all those ion engine burns i've had to deal with i decided that it was time to launch something with immense thrust and so we have the monument launcher i decided to pull apart the mars monumental resupply which we had used before and uh, sort of turn it into a Jupiter ship, just in case we needed that sort of thing in the future. So here I am rearranging it, and I decided that instead of just five blocks of ion engines that we have here, 50 total ion engines, we would have nine of them. So a total of 90 ion engines with the nuclear reactor powering them, and plenty of fuel, of course, and supplies, but also crew modules. So I decided to just pour it on. We've got all these USI modules that I decided to make sure we have uh, all the recycling systems. There are a whole bunch of recyclers built into those. Uh, so we can recycle part of the carbon dioxide into oxygen, uh, wastewater into water, and also grow some food, hopefully, I think. So anyway, uh, sad to not have the audio for the monument launcher because it is, of course, loud and we are on the offshore platform. And of course, we're launching in the dark because Kerbal rarely gives me the opportunity to launch the monument launcher in daylight. Uh, you can see the frame rates, and I, I forget if this is actually what precipitated the crash of the game and my computer. It's possible. Uh, it's possible that the monument launcher launch is what actually crashed the computer and corrupted the file. But anyway, we, we, we proceed. We proceed with it. And there is the second stage bringing us to orbit. And, well, not quite orbit. We, we leave it short of orbit so that it deorbits, and then we use the nuclear engines to finish orbit. Those fairings go off really badly, so I time warp quickly in order to make sure they don't collide with the payload, and then use the, uh, the nuclear engines in order to finish up orbit. We always separate the huge fairings after we're close to orbit, you know, with just a low periapsis so they will deorbit, but uh, otherwise it's too dangerous when there's thrust going on. I ran out of time during the stream to actually do the transfer with this, so we'll pick up with this in the next video. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.